I met a guy who had been travelling Australia with a couple of friends, hitchhiking around as many of us had done. One of his friends told him they were near his distant uncle's house, whom he had never actually met before. He got a phone number from a family member, and as they had hoped, the uncle offered them a place to stay. He picked them up in a town, and drove them out to his rural property way out in the bush. They said he seemed like a pretty normal guy, friendly and cheery. When it was time to set up a place to sleep, the uncle took them to a closet that was totally full of sleeping bags and bedrolls. Like, totally full. They didn't think much of it at the time, and all grabbed a kit and set up on the living room floor. They stayed there a couple of days, and nothing out of the ordinary happened. Afterwards, the uncle drove them to a bus station, and they were on their way. About a year later, that man, the uncle, was arrested and charged with several counts of murder. He was the man who was picking up young hitchhiking backpackers and slaughtering them. The guy who told me the story was 100% certain he had slept in the sleeping bag of one of the victims. I'm from Chechnya, and have witnessed more than a few bombings and shootouts in my life as a result of the insurgency here. Probably the scariest happened when I was about 9 or 10 years old. My father and I live in a village in the mountains. It was a hot point of the insurgency against Russia up until a few years ago. Russian FSB raids on insurgents there was somewhat common. Anyway. I was walking home from school with some of my friends one day, when all of a sudden we heard really loud bangs and booms in a nearby street. We all scatter like dogs. Me and my friend, Kazmat, hide in this back alley for a few minutes, just trying to lay low. The gunfire sounded like it was coming from everywhere, so we didn't want to move. Well, after about three or so minutes, this guy comes running around the corner, and he's holding a rifle. He looks pretty young, maybe around 18, 19, 20. Long, dark brown hair, a scruffy beard that looked kind of funny because it hadn't grown in fully. I remember he was wearing a grey Puma hoodie. He was limping pretty bad as he'd been shot in the leg or been hit by shrapnel or something, and a lot of blood was coming out. We were behind a concrete wall, and he fired off a couple of rounds at whoever was behind the wall before running out of ammo. While trying to reload, he saw us, and yelled at us something along the lines of, God damn you kids, why are you here? Run! Well of course, being like ten, we were scared shitless and couldn't move. In the meantime, his gun jammed or something because he was getting really angry and started crying and hitting his gun out of frustration. Right after that, on the other end of the wall, a guy with a ski mask and a bunch of armor pokes his head around the wall. He's a Russian FSB. He makes the shh hand movement, motions for us to lay low, and then shoots the other guy clean in the throat. He collapses and makes that awful, throaty sound people who get shot there make before they die. Me and Kazmet are hysterical at this point, because we're both kids and the gunshots are ridiculously loud. We're scared we're going to die. A few more FSB troops come from behind the other side, shoot the guy's body a few more times for good measure, and then start stripping him, all the while making jokes about him and talking about how they're going to take souvenirs from his corpse, and how much they love killing Chernozofi, a slur used by Russians for Chechens. They completely ignored us, until one, who I think was the one that shot him first, walks over to us and tells us to stop crying and to go home. He actually seemed somewhat empathetic, and patted us on the back as we got up, saying something along the lines of, Sorry you had to see that but you did good. We slowly get up and leave. I'm not exactly haunted by it, as I don't have PTSD, but it's easily the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. 
and I think about it sometimes. My father used to have two Cambodian employees that were cousins, and they were survivors of the Cambodian genocide. They were in a labour camp that had no fences. If you ran, you would likely die in the harsh conditions. Every day, they would line up the prisoners and shoot one person at random, saying something like, more of you will die if anyone leaves. They were kept there purely through fear. The two cousins decided to escape one day. One of their brothers was too afraid to go with them, and they left him behind. They said that they live with knowing that probably a hundred or more people were killed because they escaped, but they tell themselves that those people would have likely died anyway. I was hitchhiking through South Australia, heading west. I was about 14 years old at the time, and I got picked up by a carload of 20-something-year-old blokes in an old HQ. They were super drunk. At one point, one of these guys tells me that we're going to a party and asks if I want to come. Well, I was on a walkabout, and that's all about finding yourself and new experiences and all that. So I was like, hell yeah. But then, the driver got all upset. No, he says. In a loud voice, he shouts, Fuck you guys. Not again and he screeched the car to a stop in the middle of fucking nowhere. Get out, he says to me. I'm like, what? And all these other guys are protesting. He looks me dead in the eyes and says, get out, now. He seemed pretty serious, so I did. Everyone else in the car was losing their collective shit, and I was left standing on the side of the road, 200 clicks from fucking anything. Now, I don't know what they were planning, but in retrospect, I'm fairly sure it wasn't anything good. I was at a bonfire where people were telling ghost stories, and a friend told us this story about his aunt in Mexico. Back when she was a little kid, six or seven, she lived on a ranch near some mountains, and one day, she was playing outside, and ended up going missing. A lot of people from the area came to help look for her, call for her, but nothing. Like a week went by, and the family had begun to give up hope. Then, suddenly, she comes out from the trees, dirty, and with her mouth sewn shut. The family take her to the hospital immediately. The story that the little girl tells them is that she was wandering around in the trees, and some duende, a folkloric creature, came out and asked her to play with them. So, she goes with them in the woods, and when she starts to get hungry, they tell her that she needs to stay, so she does. But then it starts to get dark, so eventually, she finds her way back home. She apparently thought she was only gone a couple of hours, not a week. Apparently, afterwards, that girl, the aunt, was never the same again, and she grew up to be a very quiet and reserved woman. He says she still has scars from where her mouth was sewn shut. So, while everyone at the time was telling stories about how duende are 100% real, and some people had even seen them when visiting their families in Mexico, that's definitely scary on its own. But for this story in particular, What's scary is that this seven-year-old girl was taken from her family ranch and held hostage in the woods for a week, where she was so tortured that she ended up blocking out what happened to her and came up with a story in order to cope. And then the people who took her sewed her mouth shut, probably thinking she would die before she ever made it back to her family's home. There's a freak story that never leaves me. A guy went missing in 2004. 
He had left his home without his shoes or jacket in October, and just before he disappeared, he had called his friends and asked if they wanted to come and go to a sauna with him, like a normal Finnish person might do on a Friday night. His girlfriend came home from work to an empty home, with lights turned on and the front door open. Case went cold, and the guy was never found. Four years later, kids were playing in the woods near the missing guy's home, and noticed a scarecrow high in a spruce tree. They told their parents who came to investigate, and they immediately called the police. It wasn't a scarecrow. It was the body of the guy who went missing four years earlier. He was tied to the tree, and the body had been there for the whole time that the guy was missing. It was officially ruled as a suicide. Now, the weird thing is that according to some Finnish crime websites, the rope wasn't tied around his neck like it would have been if he tried to hang himself and got stuck in the tree. He was sat on a branch, facing the trunk, and his body was tied from three or four places to the tree. That doesn't really scream suicide to me. The guy was a drug user, and had been to prison for drugs too. Some people on those websites think that his sudden disappearance and strange death might be related to drug debts. Did someone force him to climb the tree and tie himself up like that? Maybe he died of hypothermia up there, since temperatures in Finland in October can drop below zero. Maybe the debt collectors just left his body. Another strange thing is that the newspapers didn't tell where his body was found or how he died just that some kids had found him near his home, and that there was no crime. This story is so weird, it's disturbed me ever since I heard about it. My mum was an ER nurse. A guy comes in who had flown off his motorcycle face first, and slid down the road on his face. He was wearing his helmet, but it didn't help. Basically, he was shredded, with no chin, no mouth, and no nose. All that was left were his eyes looking around in shock. Body was all scraped up too. He died. I have never ridden a motorcycle in my adult life after hearing that story. A bit over a decade ago, I helped carry a few dead guys out of an armoured car and into an ambulance. Like a testament to its maker, the armoured car was relatively intact, and the hull and cabin weren't punctured. The vehicle had been thrown so far and so fast that the occupants were almost liquefied in their own skin. I remember my buddy saying, it doesn't matter how strong a hull is if you throw it far enough. The occupants were much harder to carry than normal dead weight, as they were floppy and contorted. They bent like Gumby moved. Thinking about it sucks, and I occasionally have nightmares. I'll definitely never forget it. I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night after some nightmares, and left my door cracked open before I got back into bed. When I fell asleep, I had dreamt that I was outside my room. In the dream, I saw my door cracked open. I pushed it open, and then saw myself sleeping. When I woke up, my door was wide open. So, years and years back, on an autumn night, I experienced my first and only bad trip from magic mushrooms. I ended up locking myself in my bedroom in my flat, and at one point, heard the most horrible noises. Scratching, and a kind of eerily wet choke over and over. It just never seemed to end. I was curled up in a ball, scared out of my mind at whatever this thing was trying to break through my wall. Well. It eventually stopped, but the night wasn't over for me, and stayed bad until I eventually drifted back to reality, and passed out from the stress of what I had heard. 
Now, here's where the real horror comes in. Those noises weren't a part of my trip. My upstairs neighbor, whose staircase went along my bedroom wall, had died that night from an overdose. He had vomited into his lungs bad enough to be lethal, but not bad enough to be fast, and he had been crawling up my wall, presumably to get my attention. I found out over the next few days that he wasn't alone. His best friend had KO'd on the couch, and the dead guy had gone into the bathroom to be sick. It went wrong, and when staggering out, he had fallen down the stairs, leaving him badly injured and stuck at the bottom, next to my wall. I don't see it as a case I could have helped in. Had I been sober enough to do anything, I wouldn't have been home at all. But as terrifying as what I felt was, I feel what he went through was a terror most couldn't imagine. I know I can't. Trapped, dying, and with people around, but you can't get their attention. That's nightmare fuel at its worst. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Well, a little late with the uh, Halloween video this year, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Some spooky stories in this one, uh, I hope you enjoyed them. And I'll have another video ready for you guys very soon, actually. Um, I've got it in the works, so stay tuned for that. Not much more to add this time, guys, so remember to smash that like button, or I'll smash you, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay spooky, and remember, the best things happen in the dark.